Thank you for that warm welcome. I'm Maxine Cervenka. This is Lydia Lunch. Anybody here that still has a soul? My soul is after something more than the truth. My occupation is beg. I've got difficulty in satire, Saturn's in Venus, and I've got too many ovens in the fire. Venus is the only planet that turns clockwise, east to west. Contrary, something about a woman. Miss fire teeth. I can talk or you can talk. <laughs> Stop saying punk rock over and over. It's 77 revisited. Let's start from scratch. rock a -bye, baby in the detox. <clears throat> wrongful life. What a shame, all this pain and no one to share it with. You know the theme from the Valley of the Dolls? Well, I guess another generation is taking up the torch and the cotton. <sighs> Why am I lost as a lamb? What's in back of the sky? Nestled in the bell curve, doomed at birth, saved by an hourglass figure, walking on the glass ceiling in glass slippers, legless, foot lost in a bear trap, crop circles. I think what it's about is all these multiple personalities just trying to compete for airtime. I know that we're all suffering from narcissistic disorders, from hysterical neurosis, and you can couple that, at least for a few of you, with that obsessive, compulsive behavior. It all just starts to blur the line between irresistible impulse and psychotic reaction, which is what I'm often suffering from. I'm just trying to recover, you know, from post-traumatic stress syndrome. I mean, I'm plagued by somnambulism, night fevers, daydreams, mood swings, and I'm made ever more sensitive by the brutality which continues to surround me. Yeah, I know. You probably feel, too, like you've been battered by the day-to-day, -day, and you, like I, am probably obsessed by all these auto-erotic fantasies which always culminate in near-catastrophic destruction, which is lurking for you at every fucking term. Of course, there's all these insane phallocrats who have amassed so much power that they've started peddling it, trying to influence people all over this fucking bloody globe, and it is a bloody globe. I mean, the world has been sentenced to death to poverty, to germ warfare, to ecological genocide, to ozone depletion, to nuclear pollution, to fallout. I mean, where the fuck are we supposed to find any kind of shelter in this killing zone? Millions and millions and millions of quorum moments, the axe is falling, hours of towers, scraps of payment, black gems, every gem is a black gem, distribution of derangement, entertainment value, Thrift store stockings, it's a dime store rescue, a forum of assets. They're going to take us all to the cleaners. They've won us like a turkey. In the scheme of things, we are managed livestock. Everything sized into ownable chunks. Man's little downfall, organized. Yeah, I want to tell you all about man's little downfall. I mean, I want to tell you all about a black, homicidal, schizophrenic, maniac who is absolutely 100% guilty. But of course he can afford to pay off five, five hundred dollar an hour spin doctors to try to ensure that all the blood left on the dead blonde woman's sidewalk which leads up to his car door and dripping onto the driveway and into the master bedroom and onto the bathroom floor are all completely whitewashed. I mean who other, excuse me, than somebody absolutely 100% guilty would leave town 30 minutes after the murders were committed and when forced to return to turn themselves in is going to stage a slow paced race up and down the Los Angeles freeway with full media coverage. And of course he's a grief stricken perpetrator so he's going to be sitting there in the back seat with a smoking gun held up to his fucking head which he should have used to blow his fucking brains out with saving the taxpayers millions of dollars which instead could have gone to the motherless children and not to the fat cat attorneys who smile smugly and sign autographs making an entire mockery of the complete justice system which says, hey, you know what? I mean, as long as you can afford it, you'll be considered innocent. 
until proven beyond a shadow of a doubt absolutely 100% guilty, and he is fucking guilty. He's guilty of stalking, of battering, of raping, of abusing, and of ultimately killing the woman that he loved too much. He loved her so fucking much that he had to control her, and he couldn't control her anymore, so he had to fucking kill her because he couldn't stand the thought of somebody else getting their greasy fucking meat hooks on her. Now, there's still a chance, you know. There's still a chance that he can manipulate public opinion enough to make it appear as if the guilty party is the victim, as if the victim was guilty, and maybe even make a little scratch in the meantime by self-penning a pitiful rebuttal to all the true lies that have surfaced in the meantime. And I want to tell you. You know, I'd like to give him a taste of the here, the now, and the cow. That's conspiracy of women justice system. I'd like to see him be forced to dye his hair blonde, get breast implants, bear two children, be sexually, verbally, emotionally, and psychically abused for 17 years, and then murdered on the front steps of his own fucking home so that he too could become not only a victim of life, not only a victim of death, but a victim beyond death when one of his so-called best friends decides to pen a cheesy tabloid style tell-all biography which will assure his place in history is just another pathetic fucked up drug fiend that liked to walk on the wild side, liked to taste of the rough stuff and had to die because he had to leave it all behind. Shut up, stupid bitch. Shut up, stupid bitch, like it says on the front of my t-shirt. Why? Because you are original sin. The scapegoat, the prostitute, chased by the hissings and whipped up wishes of man-made weather, running from doorway to doorway just in time to ditch every obscene tornado, soaked to the skin by their tongue's imaginings. Don't you wish you had an umbrella? And honey, that's just a walk to the corner. Well, I guess it's our male-defined world and our need for approval and our removal to the mall so we can shop while they blow up the world. Why? Because the world is female like a blow-up doll. And that ladies' room is a screaming hall of mirrors. It's a screaming hall of mirrors that makes us feel deformed and badly compared because there's something inside that we're not allowed to see. And I look at it every chance I can get. You are tits and ass. I am tits you and are ass, tits baby. And Lips, ass. hips, tits, power. Hey, as if we haven't fed you enough. You could never do that. As if mother's milk was cheap whiskey. It certainly is. Do you know why the devil has horns? Yes, I do. Well, it's because horned animals and the crescent moon were the symbols of the goddess, the symbol of women. Women are the devil because the devil is nature and we are nature and we are the world. And when the world dies, you know what her killers are going to say? That fucking bitch asked for it. Nobody just asks for it. Oh, I know some of you have been down on all fours and have begged repeatedly, no Not doubt. Lately. Nobody just asks to be on welfare. And if you get your facts straight and divorce yourself from the bullshit they fucking feed you in the media, you'd realize that the average face of welfare is a single white female with two hungry mouths to feed, <laughs> that can't afford daycare, that can't afford health insurance, and that couldn't afford a fucking babysitter if she was lucky enough to land a job flipping greasy burgers down at the local shit fit for $4.35 an hour. Now think in this country, excuse me, before we reform welfare, I think we first need to raise the minimum wage to about $12 an hour. We need to slash doctor salaries by 70%. And we need to improve the education department especially sex ed and we need to freely distribute birth control pills and condoms and then we need to reform war fair. If this government would have redistributed to all of its citizens all the fucking money they spent on Star Wars and drug wars and the oil wars, every single one of us would be millionaires today. 
And then nobody would have to ask to be on welfare, or ask to be on SSI or ask to get unemployment, or ask for food stamps. Nobody would be on the fucking corner selling drugs or selling their body to buy drugs or to feed their family, and crime would drop. Now, the government doesn't want crime to drop. Because if crime drops, they're not going to have anyone to pick on or to pulverize or to fill all those new prisons that they can't afford to open yet. No. This government doesn't give a shit about the individual poor are going to get poor, the rich are going to get richer, and the rest of you that is basically the middle class are going to continue to stagnate in some arcane socioeconomic stranglehold while politicians all around the world are just going to continue to suck corporate cock until the cows, and that is conspiracy of women, come home, and that is to the White House to clean up the mess. Now, we all know that government assistance, uh, to the individual anyway, is soon to be a thing of the past. But you know what else they're doing? They're retroactively going back and trying to get the money back from the people they gave welfare assistance and food stamps to, which is really scary. Remember Jocelyn Elders? She mentioned masturbation as an alternative to death teenage pregnancy, sexually transmitted diseases. She got fired. Remember Henry Foster? We've got consumption and we've got no surgeon to fix us. We've got 800 million hours of thousand dollar bills speeding out of our hands into another time, into the past, into the years of the handmade cardboard sign, into the future. U.S. vet will work for food, off-ramp people, under the freeway families, you know. There are thousands of men on the corner. They'll come home and work for you in your yard, just like that old colored jockey holding a lantern. We've got a new tuberculosis epidemic in the old overcrowded prisons. And you know we're gonna be so much safer at night if a few murderers are paroled at random by the state while hundreds more are released with daggers for eyes, roaming the Reagan sidewalks and the crumbling, congested, coughing cities. In the good old days, have we been reduced enough, molecularized? Is it still the atomic age? Is it still the atomic age? Aren't they done taking us apart yet? No, they'll never be done taking us apart. Well, like I t like to tell everyone I know, you know, Exine, Yeah. you gotta expect casualties when you live in the fucking war zone. You know, I can't even call anybody up anymore who lives in the 212, 213, 718, or 818 area code anymore. Because I'm just sick to fucking death from hearing about it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about the mortality rate the fatality rate, about who's dead and dying, who's in a coma, who got hit by a car, got stabbed, shot, attacked, robbed, raped, beaten, senseless, broken into, broken up with, ripped off, evicted, arrested, infected, or just straight old subjected to sexual harassment. I tell them all the same thing. Hey, get your own fucking gig, baby. Don't try to weasel your way into one of my fucking stories. You got a problem, you can get up here and complain about it yourself. Just don't do it while I'm fucking complaining. And besides, you know what? It's 1995, so you better fucking get used to it, you know? I mean, after all, we're that much closer to the coming apocalypse. And I mean, what you gotta realize is the apocalypse isn't a mass, spontaneous combustion. It's not an instantaneous explosion of hellfire and brimstone, no. It's none of that. What it is, is the long, slow drop. The long, slow rot. It's gradual decline. It's urban decay. It's environmental terrorism. It's worldwide war. It's religious fanaticism. It's corporate takeover. And the way I see it, hey, the apocalypse is here. And it is being televised. Every time you turn on your fucking TV or you pick up a newspaper or you pick up a magazine, it's all there in red, white, and black. It's all there. I didn't have to make any of it up. And if you think I'm exaggerating, you can fucking think again. Because hell is already of this world. Hell, if you hadn't noticed, is other people. Hell 
is where the heart lies crushed and broken about all that you're powerless against. And you're powerless about, against just about every fucking thing. You can't control anything. Half of you can't even control your fucking selves. I can't control myself. I'm not expected to. And I can't be fucking responsible and I can't be held responsible. I especially can't be held responsible for the frauds that you all allowed to get elected. I got nothing to do with it. And you got it right, punker. No future. <laughs> uh, nihilism. I'm mourning oh, the people. Yeah. One thing we don't want is a record of our own minds. We don't want to look at our own minds. We want to look at Courtney Love's mind on the internet. We want great big megabytes, and we want great big megabucks. But my system is nervous. It's not in service. Something's not right. My ritual's on too tight. They've brainwashed the entire night. Okay, I hate to say it, but MTV, I won't watch you if you won't watch me. Those screens are so deadly, that virtual spirituality, that new version of a novelty record. Why? There is no why. There never is a why. I'm perpendicular to why. But this is what I tell them. You can't have my eyes, my brain, my money, or my time, and you can't take my heart, and you can't take my soul, and you can't take my decapitated head and let it roll. I'm offline. But I see the pilgrim is still in progress in his highways of Lexi. Every night I pray. Dive down, aliens, and arrest this cartoon. Reveal those pyramids. Let's have a pagan house fire, 0 AD, 0 BC. Well, here we are where something obviously forgot us. Here we are, buried underground, trying to break through a hundred levels of consciousness that we don't even know we have. Yeah, but the goal of the enemy has always been the same thing. Whoever the fuck the enemy's supposed to be tonight. The goal of the enemy has always been to confuse, to corrupt, and to rearrange your priorities to suit their needs. In other words, eat, shit, work, sleep is only supplemented by the distractionary devices which they have allowed to be created in order to control you, to control the information you may receive to control your mind, your time, but ultimately to control your money. Because after all, we are all capitalist consumers. I mean, where would we be without our cars, without our guitars, without our VCRs, our TVs, our computers, our fax machines? And what you have to fucking realize is that they are all, each and every one of them, transmitting telephonically super high frequency signatures set up to telepathically brainwash and drain you of your natural resources. Get hit, baby, because it's electricity which is killing all of our defense mechanisms. And of course, we're all very happy to just continue sucking audio-visual sugar titty, hoping for the next best thing to come down the fucking pike. Now, I don't watch too much TV. I don't go online with Courtney Love to get her latest recipe for Prozac brownies. I don't even have a fucking computer. I like to stay home alone and read a good fucking book if someone would ever try to write one for me. Now, when I'm home alone, I can assure you that the last thing I want to do is be able to access five million other slack hackers who have nothing better to do than to channel surf down the second-hand information highway wearing an electronic dog collar hoping to crash land in some kind of virtual non-reality where they can all continue to spread their technological gossip all across the global network Bullshit. Let's get some real information on the inline. Let's have some real fucking one-on-one -on -one experiences. Maybe we can communicate and learn something. Oh, I give up. Okay, I'll be the enemy tonight since I pay taxes. <clears throat> that means I support that police force that's been creeping around the globe for about 50 years now, the CIA. 
we're all responsible for them. But that's okay because we like Pepsi and we all know that Pepsi is a CIA cola. You haven't read the right books. You laugh, I cry. CIA banks. There's a CIA airline. I think it's Southwest. Now do you feel safe? And there's, of course, a CIA government and CIA laws and those CIA drugs, your straws. Now do you feel real good? Now do you feel smart? CIA spies and a CIA judge and CIA states and CIA drugs, <coughs> CIA drugs. As in, you know, Vietnam and Colombia and Central America and, you know, whatever town this is. Well, the CIA has to buy and sell drugs. They have to steal drugs. They have to trade drugs because we don't give them enough money. They have to supplement their income somehow. Although I seem to remember that we gave them more money than we gave to listener-supported radio or Greenpeace or PETA or the NRDC or FAIR or the World Wildlife Fund or the Alliance for Survival, which is all we have left, or the AIDS Walk LA or Project Angel Food or ind independent third-party lesbian candidates. Oh, yeah, we gave them all our money. We gave them all the SNL money. That's what we gave them, $500 billion. But that's okay because... There was no risk involved for them. They weren't really risking anything because you know it was federally insured by the U.S. taxpayer. So all we have to do now to fix it is pay it all back. That's only a trillion dollars, but that's a small price to pay for our national security so we can get rid of people like Castro and Cuba. And what are they going to do after they finish off Castro if they ever manage? You're next. That's who's fucking next, all of you. You know, just so you can comprehend, because a lot of you will never see one trillion dollars in your life, but you'll all be paying it back for the rest of your life. One trillion dollars, which they raped all of us for, is $4.35 an hour for 181 million years, okay? Now, if you think we're fucking paranoid, we are. And you know what? I have every fucking reason to be paranoid, because the government already has my phone number. They have my address, they have my social security number, they have my bank account number, they have my credit card number, they know my birthday by a barcode, they've set up speed traps, wiretaps, spy cameras, they've sent satellites into outer space so that they can monitor your every fucking movement and believe it or not, you are being monitored. Yeah, of course. They're monitoring you now, probably by the very thing that causes radiation, which ultimately is going to cause cancer. And cancer, as we all know, is a death worse than any fate. And we are surrounded, and what better place to be surrounded than here in this cesspool of contamination, sucking in man-made carcinogens, which are going to kill you from the inside out. All they want to do is attack, and they're attacking you every fucking way they can from the inside out. Their whole goal is to attack healthy flesh and human souls who are too weak, and all of you are too fucking weak to defend yourself. Oh, yeah. How are you supposed to fucking defend yourself from an invisible army of an invading, flesh-eating, viral bacteria with cheap Latin names? which they like to spout from their blood-stained lips and turn into abbreviated alphabetical codes like TB, HIV, MS, STP, MD, diabetes, AIDS. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, they want you to have cancer. Yeah, they want you to have fucking cancer. And they've made sure that everything is going to give you cancer, from the water you're sitting in over there to the water you drink to milk, to pork and beans, to TV screens. Oh yeah, everything now can give you cancer and they want you to have cancer so that your life can be as miserable as possible and your deathbed as expensive as possible so that they can make you fucking suffer, so that they can play God, so that white middle-aged men in white coats can concoct gods in their image so that they can play God to play cruel tricks on you, to keep you in pain and to keep you sick. Because when you're sick, you're weak. And when you're weak, they've got you where they want you. Yeah. And you're weak enough to fucking begin with. Too bad about tomorrow. Those compelling facts of injustice. Too bad about the sorrow. A million acts is about to fall. Too bad about tomorrow. 
There's a magazine for geniuses, but it's really, really stupid. <clears throat> and there's a limousine for businesses that drives right over Ovid. They get rid of all the witnesses and the Jesuses. How insipid. These terrible songs of a poetic war. Insate, insate pack. Insensate pack. Impassionate. Now, to me, tomorrow is just a word, you know? Tomorrow is just a word for some place we're all fucking looking for. And, you know, I can't help it if I feel that, you know what, maybe this is just another wasted day and wasted night. You know, I can't help it if I feel somewhat sabotaged by all the universal infiltrators, by all the perpetrators, and by the invaders who come together around me like I'm some kind of supposed to purge their collective psychosis like as if this is all just a schizophrenic pandemic and of course we're all gonna wake up and feel a lot fucking better in the morning well I doubt it and you know I know that I'm not the only one who's a fatalist or who's extremist by nature or who suffers from episodic fits of frenzy violent outbursts megalomaniacal tantrums radical mood swings or sociopathic tendencies no it's not just me, but I tend to get it. I know that these feelings are all dictated to me, you know, by nature, by nature's natural desire to explode, to implode, to spontaneously combust. And by now we are all, after all, pretty fucking sick. I mean, sick of the monotony. I'm pretty fucking sick of the monotony. I'm waiting for everything to fucking collapse. I'm unable to find any kind of equilibrium that's gonna offer up any kind of promise or hope. So why should I be expected to try to come up here with false hope? No expectations, don't worry, I won't live up to them. And you know, maybe somebody else, you know, maybe somebody else like Exene could maybe, you know, somebody who's possessed by a realm of a different kind of existence could take destiny in hand and like a surgeon or a prophet maybe comfort you all and I could just stand in the corner and puke on my own fucking blood. I doubt Thank it. you for the compliment. Now I'm going to digress from Apocalypse Yesterday. National pain is our theme. <clears throat> And tell a you a little, little story. Poetry? It's a little poem about, about me and my life in the punk rock world. <laughs> Which we're all living 20 years later. All about you, all about me, all about evil, all about Eve. Try 10 seconds of yes, 10 seconds of no. Try 20 years of I don't care. Because I'm the one. I'm the one in the bell jar with black and blue hair, with brown tar on the plaid stairs, in the old car with the sad stare, not you. And I read your palm, and anyway, did I ever tell you that your lifeline is scarred? It is, and it crosses mine, and guess where it crosses it? Right in my backyard. But I'm the one with the backyard with red hair and my own bar on those back stairs and a falling star. I've always got a falling star. Just look up there, not you. So you can wear what I wore and do what I did and take what I took and hide what I hid because now you're the one in the glass jar with your yellow hair and your black tar with no cares in those fancy hotel bars. You're a millionaire, but I'm the one that's glued to the sky. You could always, if you need a little respite from yourself, you could always just get outside of yourself and step into my skin. A monument covered with rude hieroglyphics for which there is no key. I mean, these are all just merely night thoughts caught while walking in the rain 2,000 years after the birth of Christianity and the death of all of our souls and psyche. It's all just a resurrection of emotions. It's all about memory running backwards. It's all about the vaults of eternity steeped in a red pyramid of death, these accumulated catastrophes which just keep billowing on forever towards the edge of the earth. I mean, this world, after all, is just the stopover before heaven or hell. I mean, we're all in it together, right? We're all in it together, right? We're all stuck. 
in this inquisitorial prison cell. We're all attracted by the novelty of the spectacle. I love that roar of a beast whose throat has been slit and the way it breaks the silence. I love watching the mob clustered around their cages, all those fearful souls doomed to corrupted forms of wisdom. We're all fucking invalids of duration. All of our throats are pulsing with the bile of God or the goddess or something, anything, to abate this catalog of afflictions. We're all crucified by our own desires. Yeah, you want a little respite, you could just easily step into my skin, you know, into that place where those long dark scars are where the hair no longer grows and maybe you two for five minutes will feel like that solitary ecstatic creature with the mouth of a murderess always eager for that dark night of transcendence the have nots Amazing what passes for real. Haves, have-nots, and happy meals. And the crown in the trunk of Columbus's car. I go for high strangeness myself. I like alien real estate. Red, yellow, green, quicksand. Red, yellow, green, quicksand. Hey, sometimes the ground does rush up to meet you. Sometimes slouching has nothing to do with Bethlehem. And anyway, you cannot run faster than the world turns around. The sun will stare you down. The police helicopter comes and shakes the walls and blurs the lines of my lullabies. And then the air is bloody with the blues in the night. And I hear crazy crosses sighing in the evil wind. And the car alarms are going off and the sirens and the morals and the virtue and the Christians and the horns. You can never shut that Gabriel up. Hunks of flesh are falling out of the sky. Metal, weather, riots, the planet Mercury, angel, angel, keep on coming, angel, angel, keep on coming, kingdom come already, fucking kingdom just come. I'm just attempting to find in motion everything that's been lost in space. Yeah, I know I still like to occasionally get drunk with the pain of others like some demented tormentrix. I always love to arouse that morbid lust. I love to ooze with carnal desires. I'm always awaiting that one single cosmic sexual act which is gonna violate existence itself in a monstrous and perverse manner. I'm always waiting for it to culminate in that supreme moment of ecstasy where you're no longer suspended over that sinister abyss of insatiability. I know that every single solicitation of my flesh is met with that undying hunger by that hungry mouth, that wise wound, that red eye, that greedy bitch who's bred to bleed and feeds on the rotting hulks of all of your festering carcasses. You know, the evidence of death, and we are a little bit death obsessed, I mean after all it is the American way of life, death, is before my eyes constantly. But I feel as if that, you know, it's moving from me outward. I mean, my death is always one step in advance. I mean, the world is really just a mirror of me dying. I mean, the world's not dying any more than I'm dying. I mean, and I know I'm going to be more alive in a hundred years from now than I am tonight at least historically, so to speak. But I've made my peace with death. I know what waits on the other side. And until then, is there something you want to say? Well, I could send a message yeah. to the other side. Send that message to the other side. Well, it's too late for this person to get the letter, but there are others like him that might benefit from it. Dear apologizing rock stars, reluctant rock stars, stop complaining. Fame happens. Stop complaining. You never have to work another night in your life if you don't want to. Why don't you go fishing? Why don't you climb down off the cover of Rolling Stone? Why don't you let Spin Magazine spin out like it should have ten years ago when it started? Hey, you know, if it wasn't you, it would be somebody else who was selling five or ten million records because if somebody doesn't sell 10 million records, the whole thing goes down the fucking toilet and everybody's out of a job and then nobody's rich anymore. 
So please, don't feel so bad about being famous and wealthy. We all know it's mostly luck anyway. And you know, it really starts to bum me out, Xene, that it seems like dead men have all the luck. Come on, Lydia. They make all the money, too. It seems to me like your potential to earn vastly increases once you cease to be. You know, like death, it kind of salvages your reputation. I mean, it gives you the respect that life refuses to acknowledge. I mean, how other than through death would a bleached, blonde, adolescent, junky loser be touted as the next fucking John Lennon anyway? But now he's just a teddy bear. Now he's just a teddy bear. I mean, bear. I know that suicide creates heroes and murder creates legends. I mean, Marilyn, Bobby, John, Janice, Jimmy, Jim, Kurt. Natural death doesn't count for much anymore. Neither does having the gumption to just put up with all the bullshit and get on with your petty little fucking life. Now, I know a few of you probably are in bands or some of you paint, and a few of you even probably think that you're fucking right. Well, one word of advice, baby. Start planning your own demise. I mean, it's the only way to get any kind of power, fame, glory, money. I mean, and historically, think about it, it has fucking worked, you know? I mean, Sappho, Sexton, Sylvia Plath, Poe, Artaud, Rimbaud, Baudelaire, they had what it takes. They knew what it took. Pre-mature <coughs> burial. I mean, death legitimizes your shortcomings to all the self-righteous assholes who are so steeped in the virtues of their own vices. I mean, to me, after all, death is just an act of aggression perpetrated on the living by the dead. And you know, I have to admit, it is kind of like the final fuck you if you do it right. I kind of get hard thinking about all those angels that are going to be singing something nasty at my gravesite. Right in about 60 years. But if you only had 13 pages left to write, what would you write? Would you write love letters to people that didn't exist? or that you didn't know? Or would you write hate mail and your own epitaph? Or would you write epithets against them and give them threats to return? I'm gonna return and I'm gonna annoy you. Or would you just assure them of your love? Yes, oh, I loved it here, really. I loved it here all the while. I had lots of fun, it was all smiles, all smiles and zippers undone, the end. The inescapable landscape, intolerance, fundamentalism, meet logos, logos which means truth and a culture which means lies, and every man commits tomorrow's crime together. But look between a woman's legs, you see that lighted match? Wait, don't blow that out, it's supposed to be extinguished by now, but it is not, it is not. Burn the world down with that thing. Put it out of its misery or fix it. Kingdom come already? Yes, kingdom come. Apocalypse yesterday, but hey, I already told you that. I already beholded that attack of the, why should I finish that line? Why should I start this? Because you've got a missing attention span. Convolution, a drink, a drink, a drink, a drink. Absolution, concoction, fermentation, a drink, a change in whatever. A pocket for the weather, Kleenex, treasure, mop up, whatever. Subject to leaning on answers on a pedestal, pleasure, gift wrappings, measuring. Is tomorrow their only answer to today? You know, I don't know what it's like in this town because I've only been here for about six hours and I'm getting the fuck out in the morning so it doesn't really matter, but I'm sure it's the same. That's right, it's the same. All Look, it doesn't matter. It's the same everywhere. It's no different here. It's no worse here. It's no better anywhere. If you think it is, it's a crock of shit that they're trying to feed you just so you waste your money going to New York or Los Angeles or Chicago. It's all the fucking same. Wake up. It's all the same. You know... And since it is all the same, what I'm really getting sick of are these fucking breeders. I mean, I am sick to fucking death of pseudo-alternative lifestylers, of course you know the type, who are pierced and tattooed for instant credibility, <coughs> who still manage to somehow buy the lie, get married, move to the suburbs, and then decide to fucking breed. Now, I'm not for all these rock star children either. 
You don't see any fucking rings on my fingers, and I can assure you there's no stretch marks on my belly or my thighs from shitting out a watermelon, who by the time you finish creating your new project, that vanity item, you know, that you shed out as an excuse for someone, someone to love the way that you were never loved as a child, someone to give all my attention to and hope for the future and glory, someone to take care of me and love me in my old age, is probably still going to grow up to hate your fucking guts after you've spent your entire life saving trying to feed a house and clothe a little shit who should have never been born in the first place. And you know what? Can you fucking blame them? Can you fucking blame them? Most of you still hate your fucking parents, no matter whether they're living or dead. I mean, after all, they're the fuckers that brought you into this endless holocaust of human misery. And you know what? The next war in this country, unfortunately, is not going to be a civil war. It's going to be a generational war. It's going to be all the babies of all the babies having babies who are going to be so inundated with violence and misery and suffering and death that war is just going to be second nature. Killing is going to be done out of convenience and boredom. And family values is practiced by my favorite American folk heroes, the Menendez brothers is what's gonna come down at the dinner table when there isn't enough food to feed the hungry little leeches who should have never been born in the first fucking place. That's what the next war is gonna be like? My, la my last X record? Mm. Oh. oh, I gotta read now. Okay, sorry. That was enjoyable. A question and answer period is when Jello Biafra arrives here next month. Yeah. I think all art is a complete scrawl, and that's why none of this makes any sense. But you can still genuflect and enter. I noticed that the living fall out complaining. They're driven into emptiness by too much traffic by a person or persons unknown. Open mouthed national pain and those big fat crosses, they get bigger and fatter every day. And another thing, a broken thesaurus, blessed gullibility, contradict destiny, manifest density, I hate your world. Looney Tunes, hole in the windshield atmosphere, two degrees warmer, that's all, I hate your ultra blue comedy. Tattooed mainstream outright theft of my clothes. I hate your red lips. I hate your red lips. Partakers of the evil lie, capitalist counterculture. I hate your graphics. Moneyed castration of belief. My scream where I never land. I hate your world. Stupid recollections, mutated memories of invalid Cupid. I hate your love. Urban spoils, plywood and tires, garbage streets, I hate your lost. Tomorrow of countdown, threatening sediment, upwardly climbers, I hate your buildings. Countenance of measure, rulers of life, tears of fabric, etc. of etc. I hate your laws. Breakers of tired bones, day f defeaters of daydreams, talker of too louder, I hate your reality. Why did you have to unravel my world to make yours? Well, I hate the fact that we're all locked inside this life and death sentence called the 20th century. And you know, I know they haven't started arresting people yet for being thought criminals or literary outlaws, but I'm sure that's going to start soon. And I could be the first in fucking line. And the way I look at it, is if I get arrested and sent to prison, I'll never have to be lonely again. Not with a million other fuckers in there with me. <laughs> That's right. This country has more prisoners than any place else on the entire fucking planet. And after all, I mean, 34% of those arrested are on petty drug charges. I mean, I might as well just join the crowd. I mean, after all, it won't be long before maybe it's women instead of one in every four black men who will be arrested by the time they're 25, half of them for crimes they didn't commit. What the politicians, excuse me, forget to recognize is that every time unemployment goes up, so does the prison population. 
$60 billion a year is wasted on the U.S. Justice Department, yet now 1% of that goes to reform, rehabilitation, or psychiatric counseling. They're already opening prisons, especially all over California, three strikes and you're fucking out and done doing life that they can't even afford to put people in. But they'll find a way to put people inside. They'll find a way. Because this is a fascist Nazi regime. We will continue to lock up the destitute and the desperate into concentration camps, and we're the ones who are gonna have to afford to pay for it. And what pisses me off about prison, and especially 2,600 people on death row, which they charge you two million a pop to kill, is that for that $2 million, we could be having full, large screen video projections of the latest fucking lethal injection, and they're denying me my rights to see who is doing the killing in this fucking killing zone. And at $2 million a pop, maybe I should just go into the fucking business. Hey, I could retire after one or two fuckers. And you know what? There's a lot of fucking criminals out there. Why don't you think, Big Lydia? Well, I would do it a little bit differently, Exine. I wouldn't be going after petty drug criminals. I'd be going after the career criminals. I'd be going after Bush and his son. I'd be going after Reagan and his wicked witch wife. I'd be going after Nude. I'd be going after Ali North. I'd be going after the FBI, the CIA, the moral majority, and I'd have the fucking Pope's head on a platter and I could retire wealthy and start my own fucking army. Now, what surprises me, being a bit of a FEMA Nazi myself, is that it is 1995, ladies, and you are still only committing 13.3% of the violent crime that is committed in this country. And those are crimes of passion, of prostitution, and of retribution. And those aren't crimes to me, that's fucking home life, that's family life, and that's family tradition. Now, ladies, do you want to start keeping up with the Joneses? Or do you want to be forced to mingle with the other 87%? Or should we go into plan three? Should we demand now near the millennium that we need our own streets? At least the side of the street for women only. We need our own cities. We need our own countries. We need our own continents. And think big, Xene, we need our own fucking planet. And the way I see it, hey, I'm going to think big. And when I think big, I think of a fucking oasis. That's right, an oasis. And there's no rapists. And there's no incest. And there's no hitmen. And there's no husbands. And there's no fathers. And there's no fuckers. And maybe there's not even any fucking men. And you know what? If there's no men, there's no fucking fear because there's no such thing as fear of a female planet. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll be selling a few goodies, but very few. Thank you. Keep the applause for something worthwhile. Reach in your pocket and buy a t-shirt or something. Well, we'll be selling a few t-shirts and books and CDs for about 10 minutes, so chance it.